Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about empirical formulas versus molecular formulas. So what are molecular formulas and what are empirical formulas and how do they work? Well it says right here that the molecular formula of a compound is the actual formula for that compound and it shows the exact number of each atom present in that compound where it says right here further that the formula of a compound expressed in the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in that compound is known as its empirical formula. So what the heck does all this mean? Well, let's take a look at a couple of examples right here. Let's first take a look at water. We know that water has a molecular formula of H2O. This is the actual formula for water, right? It consists of two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom, and therefore its molecular formula is H2O. This is the actual formula uh, for water. However, if we take a look at the empirical formula here, the empirical formula, like it says right here, is the formula of a compound expressed in the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in that compound. So if we take a look at the molecular formula for, for water here, we can see that it has these little subscripts 2 and this imaginary 1 here. And we can't factor anything out of the two subscripts that we see right here. So the empirical formula for water is going to be the same as its molecular formula. The molecular formula for water is H2O and its empirical formula is also H2O. The empirical formula is the formula of a compound expressed in the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in that compound. In other words, we cannot factor out any, uh, any of these subscripts to reduce it any further. However, if we take a look at glucose right here, we know that glucose's molecular formula is C6H12O6 and if we take a look right here this is the actual formula for glucose. You might also notice that you can factor out a 6 out of each one of these subscripts right here and if we factor out a 6 out of each one of these subscripts we will end up with glucose's empirical formula of CH2O right or C1H2O1 but we don't need to write subscripts of 1 so it's just simply CH2O. This is the empirical formula for glucose this is the molecular formula for glucose. Let's take a look at butane. Butane's molecular formula is C4H10. And if we factor out a 2 out of each one of these subscripts from here and from here, we will have the empirical formula CH, or I'm sorry, C2H5 as its empirical formula. If we take a look at hexane, we know that the molecular formula for hexane is C6H14. And if you take a look closely, we can factor out a 2 out of each one of these subscripts here. And if we do, we will end up with C3H7. If we take a look at ethyne, we know that the molecular formula or the actual formula for ethyne is C2H2. And if we factor out a 2 out of each one of these subscripts, we will end up with simply CH as its empirical formula. If we take a look at aspirin right here, the molecular formula for aspirin is C9H804. And if you take a look, you cannot factor out anything from these subscripts here, right? We cannot uh, factor out uh, uh, any sort of number from each one of these subscripts. In other words, there is no lowest common uh, denominator of each one of these numbers here. So the empirical formula is going to be the same, C9H804. If we take a look at methanol, methanol's molecular formula is CH2O. And we cannot factor out anything further from these subscripts here. So its empirical formula is also CH2O. Now you might notice something. You might notice that the empirical formula of glucose is CH2O. And you'll notice that the empirical formula for methanol is CH2O. In other words, it's possible for more than one compound or molecule to have the same empirical formula. However, only one specific compound or molecule can have uh, uh, only one molecular formula. Uh, can apply to a, a compound or molecule. In other words, if you have H2O, it's always going to be water. No other compound or molecules, molecular formula will be H2O. All right, that's going to be just waters right here. All right, so let's take a look at a few examples and then you can try some of these on your own. Okay, so Take a few moments to, to try these on your own. What I recommend that you do at this point in the video is pause the video and try these on your own. It says right here that the molecular formulas 
for several different compounds are listed below and you need to determine their empirical formulas. So we have ethane for example, here is its molecular formula. Go ahead and take a few moments to just write down the empirical formula. Here's acetic acid and its molecular formula. Go ahead and tell me what the empirical formula is. So take a couple minutes to pause this video and try these out on your own and I'm going to give you guys the answers right about now. So how did you do? Did you get them all right? If you got them all correct, then you know what you're doing. You know the difference between empirical formulas and molecular formulas. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.